Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Azeroth Daily for the 30th of December 2010. My name is Total Biscuit, bringing you your daily dose of wow news and comment. Just before we go on, I'd like to give a big thank you to everyone since we've just passed the 200,000th subscriber landmark. It's quite the number, isn't it? Thank you very much to everyone that made that happen. Looking forward to continuing to service you with this content in the future. And here's your news. Bashiok announced today that Blizzard have decided they're going to be giving honor to people who have reached the conquest cap when playing in rated battlegrounds. Before this, what was happening is you'd get to your conquest cap and then suddenly there'd be no point in doing rated battlegrounds anymore. Now there is a reason you can just stay in rated battlegrounds for all time and stay the hell away from, quote, the cesspit. Not my words, somebody else in this particular thread of normal BGs. There are some complaints about the fact that you cannot enter a rated battleground with a pug, but that's like saying it's a good idea to go into an arena with a pug. It isn't. It's stupid. Why would you want this? It would be the same thing, but you just get conquest points for it. Oh god, I, I'm not even going to go into that debate, but that's now the case, folks. So if you're liking your rated battlegrounds, you'd like to stay in them, you now can. There is no reason at all for you to go back to normals. Rejoice and so forth. In a continuing series of videos, the lead world designer of Blizzard, Mr. Alex Afrasiabi, has given away a little bit of information about what's going to be going on in terms of 4.1 patch upgrades, including the very juicy info that Hyjal is going to be fully restored to its former glory, because of course you've beaten everybody back, you've killed all the nasty evil things there, so everything's all sorted. And there is going to be a new set of dailies available there. There are also going to be some changes to Vashir, and there will be... For some inexplicable reason, a gazebo. Yes, not a dread gazebo, just the normal gazebo, which was quite disappointing. Behind the cathedral in Stormwind to facilitate in-game marriages. Blizzard are being very clear that they don't support that officially, but they're putting it in there just so you can do it anyway. One of the top raiding guilds in the world, Stars, from the Taiwanese service, has released a statement regarding an exploit for Heroic Antramides. They've put this out there because, one, uh, Taiwan apparently does not have sufficient GM support and methods to actually report this kind of thing like a normal server would because they don't have access to Battle.net in the way that we do. So they've decided to put out a statement and a video as to how this is actually done, and they want this to get fixed. I've got the video in the background right here. Again, I'm reporting news, so I'm not going to simply ignore this because somebody might exploit it. But just bear this in mind, folks. If you do, then you are risking getting a ban. We've seen it before. Many guilds have been banned for exploiting raid bosses. It is not worth doing and can cause you many, many problems indeed. The exploit actually surrounds simply using line of sight to block a vast number of abilities from Entremities, including Modulation, the Sonar Pulse, as well as Sonic Breath, which will stop casting entirely if the target is not within his line of sight, which makes the encounter much easier than it should be. So, uh, stars are trying to get the word out there to make sure the Blizzard fixes it, and I'm going to give them a bit of help in that regard. It is vitally important that stuff like this does get resolved quickly, because if it doesn't, then it can seriously damage the credibility of competitive raiding. If you're interested at all in the World of Warcraft fiction, you might want to head over to the Battle.net website, because they now have a new feature called the Library, which in this case is a rundown of some of the fiction surrounding The Shattering, and indeed is focused on the book by Christy Golden, The Shattering Prelude to Cataclysm. You might want to go and have a look at that. The link to that is in the description below this video. And with that, it's time for your Daily Blues. Bit of a combo blue post here. Indeed, it is the only real one worth reading today. And it's got various posters in it, including Bashiok, Rygarius, and Krithso. And the thing that I want to point out from this is something very interesting. This is in response to a post by Simple, who claims that Zahim is simply deleting anything that disagrees with him, which I certainly don't believe is actually happening. But Krithso goes on to say something which should stick in everyone's mind and should be acted upon. He says, All of us have a passion for the community. And where the line is drawn is when someone says something contrary and does it in a manner that is hostile or non-constructive. And that's simply the difference, isn't it? You can This argument comes up all the time. It's been leveled at me, it's been leveled at Blizzard, it's been leveled at pretty much anybody. So, oh, you can't take criticism. The, the point is there's a difference between real criticism, constructive, helpful criticism that can genuinely help you build a better product and actually improve yourself and raise yourself up versus criticism which is just, you suck. You know, what use is that? What, how can you act upon that? There's no information there that's any use. And indeed, that's just paramount to abuse, isn't it? Why would you take that? Would you take it? No, you wouldn't. And indeed, Blizzard shouldn't have to take it either, just because they're a company. 
I would indeed encourage everyone to make sure that all of their criticism is constructive because that's how you're going to affect change. You're not going to affect change by shouting at somebody and getting all red in the face and angry and not providing anything of worth. With that, it's time for your daily grind. Yesterday, I featured an Alliance exclusive hidden achievement in uh, the form of Ghosts of the Past. In this case, this is something for the Horde. This isn't actually a quest, but it is the low-level equivalent of Ghosts of the Past. And this one is called Joyride. All you have to do in order to get this one is to go to the far north terminal of the Goblin Rocketway and then travel all the way to the southern terminus. So simply click on it, click travel, and then off you go. After a few minutes of riding that and looking at the beautiful scenery, you will get yourself a nice achievement. Again, not a quest, but loads of people asked, is there a Horde equivalent to this alive? only achievement and there is and there it is for you and that's how to get it and with that it's time for your weekly feature it's called mod your wow now we're gonna leave these big sweeping UI mods alone for the moment. Have a look at two mods that will genuinely improve your gaming experience. One is a mod that honestly I used for ages. I used this mod for years when it first came out and then suddenly forgot about it. And now I've finally got it reinstalled and I'm glad that I have. It's called Pratt. And the purpose of this is to add new functionality to the chat system within the game. Some of the features you should be paying attention to include the ability to change the font as well as add timestamps, which is extremely useful, I might add, for chat logging. And speaking of chat logging you can also and this is absolutely fantastic set it up so that it will log chats that happened in previous sessions of the game so for instance if there was something said the last time I logged in and I want to go back and read it again and I need it there then it will do that for you automatically you can also resize your text on a window by window basis which is really useful there's a whole bunch of other great features in there I would highly recommend that you get that installed it is the quintessential chat mod there is really no reason not to have it as far as I'm concerned and this one requires no configuration at all this one is called bad boy and it is designed to automatically block spam gold spam and things like that and it will also automatically report it so that's really great and that'll help people out an awful lot I would think it also helps keep the servers clean of spam and such there are also a couple of additional mods that you can put in there you can set it up so that you ignore anything from below a certain level and you can also set it up to ignore guilt recruitment messages so that's really helpful and I would recommend that you install it's very light very easy and requires basically no configuration at all the links for those mods are in the description below this video and with that it's time for the mailbox this one comes in from Sam, who says, Hi, Total Biscuit, just a bit of a question for you. I've had this problem ever since Cataclysm came out. Every time I go into a normal dungeon for 85s as a healer, I would always go oom, no matter what, even on trash mobs. The problem is getting worse and worse, and I don't know if it's just my rotations. If you have any ideas to tweak anything, that would be greatly appreciated. Well, to start with, you didn't actually tell me what class you were, which makes things a little difficult. Plus, I'm not really a healer, so I can't give advice, but what I can say, I can explain this general principle to you. The way that healing is designed in Cataclysm is that you're supposed to be using one particular fairly efficient heal in terms of mana usage, but not all that powerful as your main heal. And then your big heals, or indeed your incredibly rapid heals, are the ones that drain a ton of mana. So if you're running out of mana, the chances are you're using those heals too many times. What I would say is that you need to go and look at a guide from somebody who does know what they're talking about. These guys can be found all over the place. There's a couple of examples here. For instance, there's a one on Tank Spot for Holy Paladins. That's worth reading. There's also one on the official WoW forums for Disciplined Priests. Those links are in the description below this video, and if you look on those forums, you should also find other guides that are worth reading for your particular class and spec. That's advice for everyone, by the way. If you ever have a problem with your class, if you think your DPS is too low, if you think you're not generating enough threat, if you think you're not healing enough or you're running out of mana, go read a guide. There are people out there who can help and are willing to do so. The official forums, Elitist Jerks, Tank Spot, those are places that are worth looking at for a start. This one comes in from Chris, who says, This guy in my guild is saying that because druids mimic other classes, there needs to be a weaker version of that class. Say because feral druids can go into bear form in PvP, they need to be weaker than warriors in defensive, and balance needs to be a weaker caster because it is a caster. I'm saying that druids don't mimic, they are a mix of classes. Ferals, for instance, are a mix of rogue and warrior. Bear form is defensive stance for a warrior, and cat form is rogue. They can heal, I guess you can call it healing, to half for all of your mana healing, like a rogue or a warrior, and shouldn't be weaker. Am I wrong here? Should druids be weaker because they are like other classes, or should they have equal or better footing because they are a mix, not a mimic? 
Well, I certainly shouldn't have better footing. The reason for that is that if that were the case, why would you take any other class to a raid? Well, you can do everything, and you'd also do it better than the class that's dedicated to that. I can understand the guy's argument, but there's also something else that you need to look at, and that's the fact that it swings both ways. For instance, Blizzard's been trying to avoid the idea of bringing specific classes and shutting other classes out of a raid environment. Indeed, they swung way too far in Wrath to that side and said, bring the player, not the class, to the point where they homogenized all of the classes and there's really very little difference between them. They did try and alleviate that with Cataclysm, and for the most part, they succeeded by re-diversifying the classes in some areas, although there is some homogenization in others, which I don't necessarily agree with. Whatever the case, the way that it has to be done, in my opinion, and this is the way that it was done to some degree in TBC, although not in an adequate or across-the-board manner, is to give each class and spec something really unique that they can bring to the group. An example, actually, would be the way that Shadow Priests were at the start of TBC. Shadow Priests could bring a mana battery style ability that nobody else actually had, so they were given value that way. The problem is that Blizzard seemed to run out of ideas and said, well, you know, we're just going to give all these abilities to lots of different specs and classes and things like that. But you, sh you can't make them weaker, though, because if you do, then min-maxing raiding guilds are going to just turn around and say, no, sorry, we're not having you because these other guys can do what you do better. But then again, you can't go too far the other way, because if you do, then you devalue pure classes. It is a delicate balance. There used to be something called the hybrid tax, which it was a construct, really. It was never actually the case, and people keep referring to it as if it was actually in the game. It wasn't, that a hybrid class was about 5% worse than a pure class doing the same role. That was never really true, honestly, and it certainly isn't now. The concept has been abandoned. But whatever the case, no, they certainly shouldn't be weaker, because if they are, then you run into all sorts of problems, because, hey, you've just picked this one. Well, that's great, but what use is it in a raid? <laughs> we want to take this guy because he's just better at what you do. There has to be balance, but there's also got to be sufficient variety to make sure that everyone has an equal place within the group to the point where you could say, well, I'm going to take this guy because he can do this, or I can take this guy because he can do this. Not, I'm going to take this guy because he is mathematically better than this guy. That's when the problems start, and that's when people start to get segregated, and nobody wants that. Okay, folks, I'm done for the day. Thank you for watching Azeroth Daily. I would like to say one thing before I go. Azeroth Daily is now an official YouTube show, which I've done in response to some people saying that it doesn't appear in their subscription box on a regular basis. I don't know what's causing that, but this might alleviate it. So it's possible to subscribe to a show and only a show. So if you go to, uh, say, if you're watching this video right now, if you click on the link to the video and you've just got this up in a page, you're not watching it on the front page, you should see that Azeroth Daily is highlighted as a link just above the video. You click on that, it will take you to a show's episodes page. Not only does that let you go through and navigate the episodes very easily, but you can also subscribe directly to the show. So if you're having any problems with it, I would recommend that you do that. Give it a Give it a bash, it might help. I don't know if it will actually alleviate the problems you're having, but hey, it's worth a try. Okay, folks, thanks a lot, and I will see you next time.